Hello, everybody. This is Coach Allison back with week 46, Defy Aging. This week, we're going to sort of split the routine into two sections. Um, and the first one is going to be an AMRAP for 10 minutes. And an AMRAP, as many of you remember, is an, as many rounds as possible. So we're going to set the clock for 10 minutes. There's three exercises involved in that. You're going to be in your own space for that. And there's, uh, yeah, I get three exercises. Everything is for eight reps. So you do the eight reps of each of the exercises, go through as many rounds as you can for that 10 minutes, and however many rounds you get done, you get done. After that, there's going to be a more standard circuit on the turf um, that involves four stations, four exercises. So depending on how large your session is, you might have to double up quite a bit at some of those stations, because again, there is only four. Um, that's gonna be three rounds of 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. Okay, so again, kind of two different um, two different sections involved in this week's workout, kind of breaking it up a little bit. Let's review all of the exercises. Okay, for the AMRAP, the first exercise is an RDL, Romanian deadlift, and we do these quite a bit, so this can be a quick demo. We're gonna be doing kettlebells because if we do dumbbells, I don't think we'll have enough because um, you'll need two dumbbells, okay, and we might have some full sessions. So, flat back, soft bend in your knees, hips are going to go back as we hinge. It's very important this is a hinge and not a knee bend, not a squat. Okay, so hips go back, flat back, and that kettlebell just drops straight down. It's very important that it's not drifting forward. If it's drifting forward, that means that you are really just leaning forward and not hinging, if that makes sense. That kettlebell should be dropping straight down. Keep your neck neutral, so make sure we're not looking forward like this, okay? Then your neck's not neutral, okay? Soft bend in the knees only, so make sure you don't have too much knee bend. That turns into too much of a squat. You should feel a good stretch through that hamstring here, okay? And we make sure that, keep, that we're keeping the shoulders down and back like this. If we start to round those shoulders and allow them to come forward, that's when our back starts to round like that, and we don't want that to happen. So again, I'm gonna take those shoulders, get them down and back. That helps to keep the back flat. All that stuff, there's lots to keep in mind with deadlifts, okay? So that is going to be for eight reps. Second exercise for our AMRAP is a two-point row. It's a back exercise. Um, you might use the same weight as you did with the deadlifts. You might not. You might switch to a different weight. I'm grabbing a dumbbell for this. You can use this, the, a kettlebell that you had for the, the deadlift. It's fine. But the two-point row is supporting your... We do this one a lot, so I know most of you are familiar. Supporting yourself on that front thigh and then pulling up and back. And you're kind of bringing it up towards that hip bone, so make sure you're not bringing it up towards the armpit or towards the shoulder like this, but instead kind of at a slightly back angle. You want to keep a lot of distance between your shoulder and your ear. So we do eight one side, then switch and do eight on the other side. So that one is kind of two, sort of two things because we do have to do both sides, but eight on each side. And lastly, we have overhead presses. We're going to do single sided, however, so this is also eight on each side. But for a little bit of variety um, this week, because we do so many overhead presses, but just in different ways. Um, let's do neutral grip this time. So palm is turned in like this. We do most of our presses like this, I think. But again, for a little variety this week, let's have the palm turned in. Unless that hurts your shoulder for any reason, if you have any sort of maybe an injury or any sort of impingement, any, any reason that that is causing pain, because all of our shoulders are different. We all have some issues with our shoulders maybe then go to this, totally fine. But if it feels okay, just for the variety, let's do a neutral grip this week. So you'll do eight presses one side and eight presses on the other side. Okay, and that is our three, that wraps up our three things for our AMRAP. Everything is eight reps, 10 minutes on the clock, as many rounds as possible. All right, moving on to the circuits. Now there's four exercises. Um, on the turf and rotating around for the three rounds. Since there's only four stations though, um, be prepared to have maybe multiple people at each station. If we have a session at the max of, you know, 12, and I think some of our gyms, the max is even higher than that. So we might have some crowded stations. Um, so, but hopefully they can be spread out because there's only four. So, but you just might need some, a lot of dumbbells or stuff 
um, at each station. So just, you know, be prepared for that. First one is push-ups. Yay. All right, really quick review on push-ups. We can do knees. Okay, and if we're doing knees, make sure that your whole, see how my whole body went down? Like my, my hips and my stomach and my chest all went down towards the floor. It's okay if you don't touch the floor. So if you're getting halfway like this and that's where you're at right now, that's great. What we wanna make sure is that we aren't just doing what I call a, a, a nose dive. That's just my own, we're not just doing, like we're not just dipping the face down or even, even worse is like keeping your hips like this and then see how my butt is staying up. So that's not a push up. It's very important that your hips and your torso go down with your body. Again, even if you're only getting halfway and that's where you're at right now, that's okay. We still want the form to be correct. If you're ready for this next step, you can definitely, obviously you can pop up to your toes and do a full body weight push up. That's wonderful, but same thing applies. We're not doing um, like this. We're not just dipping the face down. So only pop up to those toes if your form is in check and you are ready for that. And of course we can do an incline push-up as kind of a middle ground. If you, if you, first of all, if you're unable to do, get to the floor, these are a great option. But it's also a great option if, you know, maybe you feel like you're ready to progress away from the knees, but a full toe push-up is not is is still too advanced for you, or your, your strength is not there yet. This is a great middle ground, but all the same stuff applies. The hips and the torso and the chest and the whole body has to go down for it to be a proper push-up. What we're not doing is this, okay? Just always wanna reiterate that proper push-up form. Anyway, that's station one. Okay, station two, going to be kettlebell sumo squat, one that many of you are very familiar with. Um, sumo squat has this wide, this is like weirdly distracting in the background. Has sumo squat has that wide stance, okay? With the toes angled um, slightly outward like so, right? And then adding the kettlebell is just gonna be that dead weight hanging straight down. Um, so we're not gonna be pulling up or anything like that. The, kettlebell to keep the arms dead weight. When you do your squat, make sure the knees at the bottom are tracking right over your ankle. So see how my knees go out and then the legs go straight down. So they're not caving in like this at all. From the side, to show you, you can have a little bit of natural forward lean, but it just should be at whatever feels natural. So don't force yourself to stay up super tall and straight. That's going to put a weird angle on your hip that won't feel good but also don't lean excessively forward that's kind of turning into kind of a half deadlift half squat and that's not proper squat form so just whatever natural body forward lean you have is fine and that is our kettlebell sumo squat next station is an isometric bird dog so it's 30 second sets so we're going to hold one side for 15 seconds and then switch and hold the other side for 15 seconds so isometric so hands and knees to start, keep the neck neutral. So keep looking straight down. And we do one arm up and the opposite leg. And we just hold this for the first 15 seconds. Your coach will call out halfway and we switch sides and hold that. So I do want you to really, oh, am I even in the, geez. I want you to really um, focus on a long lengthened arm. So we're not just kind of holding it, you know, not kind of holding it like this, really stretch it out. Same thing with the leg, long, pointed toe and lengthened leg. Try not to just kind of hold it bent and, you know, droopy like this. So really go for that length and that stretch and like you're being pulled in each direction. And yeah, there you go. You can definitely do this on an incline for anyone staying off the floor. I don't have a, just your hands would be on an incline, like a bench and you'll do, <laughs> you'll do that same thing just with your hands on a bench. So anyone staying off the floor works just fine with your hands up on an incline. The next one is called a puddle hop. Um, we've done this more so in one of our, in our warmups um, and not with a mat. So this is gonna be a little more intense than in the warmups we've done it, when we've done it. So, cause you're actually gonna have a mat or something like this, like a mat to jump over. Uh, so a puddle hop is kind of it's like, picture this as a puddle out in a parking lot or something. 
and you're trying to do just like a single leg kind of a quick little hop over it. Okay, so it's 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 not very it's not a very intense jump. We're not doing a big, you know, vigorous jump. It's just a quick little like I just did. It's just a quick little little boop. Okay, and then you turn around and go the other way over it. Try to do a few. We all have a leg that is our natural leg to want to lead with. It doesn't always it isn't always your dominant leg either. Sometimes our dominant side isn't always the leg we're most coordinated with. You know, our, our anyway, uh, it, it can be surprising. So, um, so try to do, you know, alternate the leg that you are leading with, and it's just kind of have fun with it. You know, it's just kind of a casual little hop. See how well I was doing that. Anyway, um, and and we're using the mats because if you do happen to like hop you know, step on it. It's fine. You're not going to fall. You're not going to trip. You're not going to break anything. It's a mat. You can step on it. It's, it's fine. Um, so if you misjudge your hop, it's, it's okay. So that is the puddle hop. And if that distance is a little too wide for anybody, you can definitely do it without the mat. So it's fine. If we're going, if we're, if it's got to be a little bit shorter, um, distance than that for skip the mat, push it out of the way. And that is just fine. You can work towards that wider distance and, and clearing the mat eventually. Um, but that is the puddle hop. For the team builder this week, we're gonna do a battle rope relay. <clears throat> I'm not gonna demonstrate any specific battle ropes. I'm gonna let your coach decide what type of battle rope um, variety they're gonna have you do. But it'll be a relay in the sense where if you have a smaller group, um, actually it won't be a relay, it'll be a team effort. But if you have a smaller group, we're gonna have each person take turns going through and doing probably a, like a 30, 20, 10, where everyone does 30, everyone does 20, everyone does 10. If you have a larger group, we're gonna probably split you and have everyone go through and do uh, the, the amount of reps, you know, 30, 20, 10, but see who, what team kind of gets done first. In that case, it will be a relay. So I'll just let your coach decide, depending on how much time is left in your session and how many people are in your session, how they want to run this. However they do run it though, it will be a battle rope involved, surprise on the variety they select for you might be something new um and it might vary from session to session in the the way that you get it done but let's have some fun with the battle rope uh we don't have a ton of specific cardio in this week's workout so i really want to burn it out and get a nice metabolic finisher with our battle rope this week all right team well that's week 46 i hope you enjoy it and i hope everyone is getting acclimated to the new warm-up and cool down and you are also enjoying those new moves. So yeah, we'll see you back next week.